One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around. We're talking today to Peter Gillette. And before we came on air, when I asked Peter, who was Peter today? And he said, I'm a music teacher with a big smile all over his face. So welcome to the program. Thank you. And we would love to get to the point where you are today as a music teacher. But instead, we'll start right at the beginning. And how did you get interested in music and where did it begin? Well, when I was a child, I was born in England and went to Hong Kong when I was five years old. My father had a music shop that he managed for 10 years over there. And he used to bring all the music home. And that was my first interest. Of course, he played and had used to entertain most nights at home. I had a piano, etc. So we used to hide around the place and have a listen and all that sort of stuff. Have all these sort of sing-alongs, Yeah, it? yeah. And then um, we moved. Um, I used to play drums with brushes on and biscuit and that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> I can, it, it brings it back to the fact we had brass fire guards and, and that was the drum often. People yeah. used to bash on that. <laughs> and then in, um, I went to England for two years um, and that's where I... I learnt piano from five till twelve, but when I was in England at eleven, uh, Tommy Steele ah, came yes. along, and I hated classical music. I hated all my musical stuff, but Tommy Steele came along, George Formby, and I bought a ukulele, and wow! It was away. The sky, then, skiffle and yeah, shuffle. skiffle, and then then it was um, Elvis, um, whatever his first song was. I can't remember now. Jealous Rock or something like that. Um, it's just the rhythm of what it was. It was the rhythm that I really, really liked. So that was the kind of beginning stages. And then I went back to Hong Kong. Then we went to Australia and um, I went to school there and was in a couple of bands in school just with a piano and drums and trumpet. <laughs> I hate to think <laughs> what it was, sounded like now. Well, I remember back to my childhood and that was the band. It was mm. the saxophone. Three-piece. Yeah, three-piece. A piano, drums and a sax or a fiddle or, even. Or <laughs> they used to. Yeah. Yes. But then we came to New Zealand when I was 16 and a half and I didn't do anything with music till I was 19. But I used to go around to different places and strangely enough, was a man called um, Dion Murphy at the Copper Cat with the band. I used to go up there and... Uh, Gosh. Um, that's something we didn't know. No, I know. But it's true. I just thought, <laughs> thought about it last night. And that's where I, I actually listened to the band and watched you do what you did and admired what you did and the band. I thought it was a great band. And then I started to go and listen to other bands. And I was watching them and I thought, well, I can probably do that. It's just two chords or <laughs> might have been three. Why can't I do that? Yeah. 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 So I went back to Copper Cat and had a look at your guy that played the piano. <laughs> Fred Mummery. That's Fred. right. And that, yes. that was probably, really, when I think about it, which I hadn't until last night, was my inspiration to get into music. So it's, it's actually goes it's a big wide circle, isn't it? It is. Big, but let me just tell you something. I mm. still t- say I introduced Ray Columbus to singing, mm. singing his first song, and I mentioned and that Super on the Cyril program. And Cyril said the same and, thing. And Cyril said the same thing. And having you say that, we feel quite good about those things yes. now. Yes, oh, gives well, us a glow. It is. It, well, I mean, it, it's strange how that is a fact. I was speaking to two guys last night, um, Ted Mears and oh, Ted Mears, Ian Rollins. Yes, and the, yes we, from the jazz school. And you said the same, the same thing. You know, um, it's funny. We all used to go to coffee lounges, you know. Yes. There's no drinking or anything. Just have coffee and listen to music, and so that was it. That's that was the beginning. And I still didn't do anything, and um, because I only knew one song on the piano, I think it was Alley Cat or something, not very good. <laughs> and there was an ad in the paper, and my mother said, "Yeah, go have a go." So it was Don Clarkson from. Was a group called the Downbeats. That's yes, right. That's, that's right, and that's Ray Columbus spoke last yeah. week about that. So I went along and played my one song, and suddenly I was in the band. <laughs> you had to play a piano with a microphone in it, you know. Yes. <laughs> and then I got a thing, thing called a Univox. It's the thing you attach to the piano. It had like Telstar, that, that song called Telstar it had that sort of sound, popcorn things like that. That's just been redone right. at the moment. Um, and that was the beginnings of it. And Don Clarkson was a real taskmaster. He worked us seven or eight hours a day rehearsing. Really? Yeah. So and that was... was good? Oh, yeah. Yes, it makes a big difference. It... 
mm. where they had him and they went on to different groups. Well, after that group uh, went to, straight from there to the Plainsman, and then for, I mean, a couple of months and then joined the Castaways in Wellington, they were there. So there'd be Peter and the Castaways, wasn't Peter it? Peter Nelson and the Castaways. Peter Nelson and yeah. the Castaways. And, and who were, was at the Plainsman? Uh, I was with Peter Henson. Right. Uh, this, uh, the opposition, probably the first opposition when I think about it. And I was there for about probably two or three months, and then uh, a fellow called Barry Johnson recommended, and we were only in, in Wellington three months. We did about four records, I think, and then we were in Australia. I'm listening with interest to your very modest put down of your ability at the start because uh, you're seen as uh, someone to emulate in the keyboarding and playing of the piano. Um, because I've listened to you many times and um, mm -hmm. some of the stuff you play is wonderful. Absolutely. Great uh, backing for a, a person who's singing because you can always rely on you to be there. And the other That's thing. Very you, thank you. And the other thing, Peter, is that. All the people, the entertainers we've been having on this show, 50 Plus and Loving It, mm. have all said, Peter Gillette, Peter Gillette. Peter right. Gillette. Your name keeps coming up. So your name yeah. keeps coming up. There's a lot of people out there who totally admire what you do and how you well, do it. Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, I'm, I am, uh, I'm actually shy. I've Stranger. noticed a Half wee of bit. me is shy, and the other half is a show off. <laughs> <laughs> On stage. You You're know. not born in You've October, are you? <laughs> no, I'm a Gemini, you know, two, two faced monkey. <laughs> anyway, but, you know, that's, that's uh, I mix with some people whose ego has been so out there that I didn't want to be like them. And perhaps that's why I pulled back further, really. I think you're only as good as your last gig, whatever. And I actually am a teacher. I like teach. I like giving. So I'm a, I'm a giver rather than a receiver. That's interesting. Yeah. So to explore that little area there about <clears throat> teaching, how did you get into that? Did you do that fairly early on? Or, no. Or? My, my father, when he was alive, used to teach at home. And he used to get four people crammed around one organ. I thought, what a rip-off. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it, it was him that, when I went, I, I went teaching privately to begin with, like one-on-one, -on -one, and he said, you know, take four at once. And because he said it, naturally, I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I didn't think I could do it. That's probably why I didn't do it. Okay. Um, and then I went to work for a place called Beg, you know, the Beg's Technics for three years, 90, in the 1990. And did a whole lot of courses there and all that stuff. And having to do that, I had to teach eight people at once and six people. So when I went on my own, I, four was easy. Yes. But I also had the experience of doing it, and I've been doing it now for 14 years. And you and still loving, love it? Oh, I love it. And I where do you do it? I, uh, well, two schools every day. So one at lunchtime, one after school, uh, through through the town. And how do you engage them? They're young. Are they there because they want to be there? Oh, yeah. If there's any chance that someone doesn't want to be there, I weed them out really quick because when I was taught, I had seven years of being taught and I didn't want to be there any minute of the time. I really didn't like, because it was classical, I didn't know what classical was. I didn't know anything I was playing. And didn't light your fire? No, I either got, I got whacked on the hands all the time and if I did something wrong, if I got something right, I got a certificate and a, and a cup, which meant nothing to me. So I, I actually hated it. So I didn't want, because I was not, and, not forced into it, but And yet made you survived it. it, which is really great, isn't oh, it? Oh, well, rock and roll made me do that. Well, isn't that wonderful? And you still had the, type, yeah. the feel for music and it brought you through it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I find that quite interesting. So anyone like that I can pick for whatever reason, and I would rather not teach them. I'd rather be given a go to teach them to show them you can have fun. I mean, I am the age I am, but I still fall on the floor when I'm teaching. But that's what I do. I, I'm a kid, and I love it. Good. And when I go in the schools, whatever, the kids, I get out the car and there'll be eight or nine kids. I mean, half of them aren't even in the keyboard class. They just, just have a, 
nice. It's a nice. They enjoy your personality. Yeah, because they think I'm an idiot. <laughs> Which is cool. It's That's nice. cool. Yes. It's, yeah. it's really nice to hear that, Peter, because we've heard all the stories about how um, different teachers, when you were kids, we've all probably experienced, whacked you across the knuckles mm. when you're trying to learn the piano. Yeah. My mother told me the same thing. And yes. I got it. Mm. And it soon put me off. Not that I had a great deal of talent mm. for any piano at all, mm. but I got whacked on the knuckles and I hated it. Abs- and I, I believe that if you want to progress at something, you've got to love it. You've got to yeah. enjoy. We need encouragement rather than, there's other ways of Wrapping on the knuckles. My uh, granddaughter last night uh, was showing my grandson how to play the piano for the very first time. She's only three. She and she picked my hand up and she said, "Show me, show me." And she had it. And I, it's, it was her fire, not yeah. his. Yeah. So it's it's something that lights inside you with music, isn't it? Oh, I think so. Music's a wonderful thing because you can you can be happy, you can be sad, you can be angry. And whatever is, it's if you can use that time, whenever it is, to constructively put it into something. Just put the tape recorder on, or yes. you know, record it. Doesn't really matter what. Just record it. That's the beauty of this age we live in. It, mm. Everything can be retained and yeah. not lost. That's part of this program mm. that we run, Fifty Plus and Loving It. Is that the musicians that I admired and and worked with. Uh, they are coming to the age where mm. they are now starting to retire, and a lot of them don't have that mm. recorded memory. So um, oh, no, enjoying the fact yeah. that we can share with you mm. and pick up some of the things that, that made you. However, having said that, I've recorded hundreds, hundreds of thousands of things. I never listen to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, when you listen to something you just done, you all, I'm a picky about myself. Mm. And in the You're end, your it, greatest it, critic. Yeah, so therefore, in the end, I, I, it's not worth listening to. But if I don't listen to it for 10 years or 20 years... On reflections, it makes me laugh. You know, it's funny because, <laughs> yeah. uh, like you said, you had Larry Mackay on the program recently. When him and I were down at the Star and Gator, we used to record, you know, um, quite often. And some nights we'd think we were fantastic. We'd <laughs> go in here in the morning, it was a load of rubbish. <laughs> and yet the other times, you know, so it was lovely, though. I've still got the tapes. And you've got to remember one thing too, Peter, mm. is that when you give the music out, it's there for that moment yeah. and then it's gone. Yeah. Unless you record it when you can say, wow, that was awful or good or whatever. Yeah. But for the audience, it's a moment. You gave them the moment it's, and that's it's it. The well, it's the energy generated yeah. by yeah. the whole thing. It's the good feeling you give out, the good feeling they give mm. you. Yeah. And it's a that's, moment. That's life, really. Some of those moments that you mm. mentioned uh, before we came on air that have mm. been even your reunions and where you're playing now. Well, we had a reunion last year of a group called Peter Nelson, the Castaways, at the Hornby Workmen's Club. And who was the membership of the... Of the oh, sorry, it was Peter Nelson was the singer. Doug Henderson was the rhythm guitarist from Australia. He's there now. He's got a recording studio over there. Len Ormsby was the guitarist. And Don Clarkson was the bass player. And Doug Petrie was the drummer who... Yeah. Yes, they're all big names. We well, remember back them all. in the days, you know, the damn bits, really. That yes, that's most right. Most of it. And so that reunion was, we just did it as a see what happens. We didn't have any aspirations of getting people there. That wasn't, we just wanted to do it. And that's what really happened. And it was, it went very well. Thank you, you know, thanks to you got, people coming along. You, got, you said you got some pretty good numbers along. That was great. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it was a good house. Then we went. Uh, we went to Australia recently, a place called Woi Woi. Um, but when we went, we went through Sydney for a day, had a rental, so we went back to the place where we flatted, I found where we flatted, and saw Sydney again. That was, it was a memory wonderful. lane in reverse sort of thing. Oh, it was it? lovely, <laughs> lovely. But anyway, we played up in Woi Woi, and that was great. And then we've just come back from Timaru, where we play each year in the band down there, City Limits, and... The castaways did one afternoon, or one day, down there. And whilst we were down there, we backed many artists from New Zealand and Australia. So that was probably those kind of things. Our my, golden moments. My, my moments, yeah. We look back, and we've talked on this program about the time that you people played, is it the Majestic? Mm-hmm. And the great sound. So in people's mm-hmm. minds, there are golden moments from the past where you were playing, where they got oh, those Oh, those wonderful. early days, I think they were full of gold moments, but there were too many of them, and we should have concentrated on the music more, perhaps. You know, uh, <laughs> that, you know, every day, every night that I played, 
from the beginning right up till I was about 50. I don't think there's ever, you know, ever been a negative one. And what's music brought to you, Peter? Oh, just complete fulfilment, happiness. I mean, it's, good, it's also given me all the opposites to those things, but the beauty of it is happiness and I feel good about myself and, and I can pass it on to children now. Well, I have done for a while, but that's probably where I feel, I feel comfortable. And that's because great. Because I'm not doing what I don't want to do. I'm not, being, I'm not just doing what I want to do. <laughs> it's when things come along that interest me, I can get, I feel as though I can get something out of it inside, not financially, just inside. So you've come to the stage of giving back what yeah. you've got all yeah. those years. Yeah. You know, with music, you give out what you can and you get back from the audience the appreciation yeah. and now you're giving it in the likes of teaching these yeah. young people to enjoy music and put it yeah. forth. Give it back to me Again. so it goes on. Yeah. It's wonderful? a real circle because... Yeah. Um, oh, no, it is wonderful. It's well, a, it's your a, father has yeah. been mentioned several times as yeah. a great musician as well. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, And so it's a circle. It just yeah. keeps going on and on and it's wonderful. So I'm hoping that it won't break yeah. because we've had some interesting conversations on air over the fact that a lot of of younger musicians now are relying on electronics to produce mm. what we had to put hard work into. That's true. And yes, the world's changing, but some things remain the same from the time when the caveman was hitting rocks on, uh, with a stick. Oh, I, I, I actually teach electronics, and one finger can give you lots of different sounds, but when you get past that introductory stage, that makes it interesting to begin yes. with. As you go on, then I can ex then explain how things really work. So is it's a mix, you know, I was taught up the old hard school and now it's, a mix it's the, the easy school, so it's a matter of getting the balance, balance. right. It just worries me a wee bit. Is it a mixing down or a dumbing down almost of our skills? Uh, well, that's, yeah, it's like anything. There's a thing called the old school way of doing things and that means getting down and doing it from the bottom up. I don't think a lot of people would be able to do that today now. I'm be interested honest. because when I was young, I used to be ill a lot and I took clocks to, to pieces and put mm. them all back because that took hours. Did you put them back? Yes, oh. hours of work. <laughs> wow. And now, of course, uh, you get your, your clocks and you open them up and there's nothing in it. <laughs> it it's, nothing, it's just a chip. Just a battery. It's a battery, <laughs> a battery yeah. and a chip. Yeah. chip now. Chip yes. Now, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it is a bit like that. Yes. Um, yeah. Fascinating. But uh, I still think that you still use the same skills as what you would have done prior to that, but you use the benefit of technology maybe to get further ahead than you could have. So On your there's, own. there's more benefits for it than against it. It's just applying the old things somewhere along the line so that you actually know what, how, how it's doing whatever it does on its own. Yes, and so the, you, the whole point of it is communication. You're communicating something from inside yeah. that's personally you, mm. outside so other people can enjoy it. Well, it's a bit like having a hand and, and hitting it quietly then louder. It's, it's whatever you do with that, it's like that's music that's to music. any instrument. For those of you who've been listening to us, you've been listening to us talking to Peter Gillette, who could be called Mr. Music. <laughs> I want to thank you very much for coming along and sharing with us, Peter, because it's, it's been a wonderful experience. And it has been, but I have to say that it's been a bit like sort of drawing blood out of a stone to get you to talk about yourself, because I take it that, yes, you are a shy person, but... Modest, yeah. even. Modest, yeah. <laughs> and yes, I also accept that when you go on to that stage, that person becomes a total extrovert and he's out there putting it out, which is what an entertainer is. So I'd like to thank you also. We've had a great deal of enjoyment in seeing you come along here and talking to you, and thank you very much for that. Thank you for having me. Thank you. See you later, alligator. So long. The last song.